Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another matchup here in Group E as we have SA Wampang versus Baby Yoda. Now, before we look at the composition, I want to note that these two players know each other very well and are friends in our Discord server. And that is why they are fighting with the same composition. We have Yuan Shao, Yuan Shu, and Yuan Shang fighting each other, all bringing in a mixture of their own unique unit. Now the difference in composition of the unit is actually what's going to make a difference in this match in my opinion, because the generals all have zero smash abilities. Sure, they have super fast attack speed if Yuan Shao and Yuan Shao can stay alive and they can kill each other, but after that, they're just one general against a whole bunch of melee infantry. And there are 13 melee infantry on both sides. The main difference here is that Baby Yoda brought a one extra yellow dragon and SA Wampain opted for two elite rapid tiger unit rather than having just one of those normal rapid tiger. I think this is called uh, something off the left. Uh, essentially, I think I'm going to favor the yellow dragon if they get a charge. I'm not sure how the stats stack up for Renshul's unique unit. All we know is that in campaign they're terrible because they don't have shields. But I think their offensive stats are okay. Not as high as Yellow Dragon's charge though. So that's going to be the main factor. If all five of Baby Yoda's Yellow Dragons can get their charge off, then this is going to be pretty good for him, no matter how the general fight goes. But let's see how things swing, because if these commanders can stay alive, let's say one side keeps their general, they can buff melee evasion for everyone, and that can definitely swing things as well. So let's jump into battle. And looking at deployment, nothing crazy going on here. Basically we have a bunch of people lined up and they're all going to charge into each other. If we look at the generals, uh, Yuan Shu is the one people are probably least familiar with. Standard commander tree, nothing special about him. The other two have familiar conflict. They will help boost uh, the units. Yuan Shan's probably the better one because he gets both active skills rather than one active and one passive. Already have a version of the passive nature's ally. We also have distant courage, but that's probably not gonna matter because I think the generals are gonna fight each other. Now the stat difference: warriors of the left. That's what they're called. Warriors of the left. Something of the left, and they have 58% evasion, 53% armor, 26-26 split on damage, 24 attack speed. Not bad. 114 charge. If we compare that to yellow dragons, we're looking at much less evasion, so in a straight up fight, they would actually outperform Yellow Dragons. So that's going to be interesting, but the charge is the massive difference. If the Yellow Dragon gets the charge off, the 420 additional charge, that's no joke. That will absolutely crush whatever's in the way. So that's going to really play a part in the outcome of this fight. How many charges can those Yellow Dragons get? Because you want to treat them almost like cavalry. I'm pretty sure both of these players are just going to run their units into each other. I doubt we're going to see any fancy shenanigans. This is obviously sort of a show match of sorts. But it does bring up the question of how to most efficiently use your infantry line to get advantage. In the case where everyone has melee infantry, have the same number of melee infantry, Straight up charging might be the best option. You might want to overload one side. So for example, these Leon Daring infantry might be a weakest link here compared to the rest of the unit that's being brought. Perhaps throwing all the yellow dragons on one side and then charging at the weakest side so that they can complete the hit and then wind over for the flank might be the best option instead of strong versus strong. Try to find your strongest, crash their flank on one side, and then try to get the flank on the enemy units from behind. This is a bad idea. Or another strategy might be making your columns as narrow as possible. So this is as wide as possible, but as narrow as possible. So you kind of absorb the enemy charge a little better. That's like the only idea I have so far. You absolutely don't want to double stack anywhere. 
or you can try to go as thin as possible with your deployment so you have some extra length at the end so you can sneak a unit behind for the flank. I think that's the, the couple options. You, you go a couple units narrow to absorb more pressure so that you open up flanks or you go extra wide to open up a potential unit flank or you overload one side. This double stack is a bad idea because the units on the back aren't going to get a good charge and you're not going to resolve the fight any faster. Alright, we can see all the separate charge man can be given out. Oh, this is going to be good. Literally infantry with the same flag charging into each other. I wish there wasn't tall grass. Alright, yellow dragons. Finding their mark, getting the kills. The generals are not fighting each other, actually. They're going... Oh, they're meeting, they're meeting. Okay. Any dismounting? Oh, I wish they didn't fight in tall grass. We would have a better view. Oh, we do have a dismount. On the two with the familiar conflict. Either get out or get off as well. Yep. Everyone's everyone's off. Everyone's targeting Yuan Shu. I love it. Even though Yuan Shang is probably the best target because he has lower armor, and if you kill him, the other Yuan Shu doesn't have a bonus anymore. But everyone hates Yuan Shu, so let's kill him. I'm okay with that. All right, I think Baby Yoda's Yuan Shu is dead. As well as his Yuan Shang. So his last general here has no extra speed. Oh no, he's still alive. Never mind, I lied. He only lost Yuan Shu. Alright, they're boosting evasion. That could turn things. I don't know why Yuan Shang's busy fighting units. He really needs to get over here. Alright, Yuan Shang is dead. And Yuan Shang's dead. Different Yuan Shang. Now it's a fair fight. Well, it's not fair. It's 2v, 2v1, but no one has extra attack speed anymore. Not even looking at the units, even though I think the unit fight matters a lot more at this point. We'll take a look after the last Yuan Shang dies here. Because I feel like he's gonna... Maybe... Oh, he he traded one back? Yuan Shu is the winner! Alright, so... Apostles, Yuan Shu... Wow, what happened? So his Yuan Shu won. But his unit in the middle got absolutely crushed by Baby Yoda's units. And he lost Yellow Dragons too! Right, because if we look at what he has, his four unit Yellow Dragons are gone. It definitely looks like a flanking action, because they're behind, way behind. Wow. I don't think Genshu can do anything here. Right? There's no ability you can really use to help, except for unyielding. But the unit difference is just massive. For once, the general had really no impact on this fight. This straight-up clash. It's, it's literally a straight-up clash. They just won. I guess they had more units. Which makes sense, because Baby Yoda was in a thin line. He, he had all his unit in one thickness. But there were double stacking of some of the warriors of the left and the Liang infantry for Wang Pei on both ends. Where he kind of went double thick on the both ends and then thin in the middle. And that proved to be different. The, the thin units got crushed. Well, it's not even close with the infantry fight. I mean, once once I start wavering and routing, uh, just just that's it, right? You're just getting slaughtered by the rest, and it could be super close. It could be both units at 60. The first unit that gets to 59 start wavering, gets murdered by the one who still remained at 60, right? These yellow dragons took a lot of damage, but they just eked out the head, and uh, we got killed. And it's time to celebrate. That's a very interesting battle. Props to both players for going with this composition. But as you can see, yeah, some of these were really close. You can see even after routing and the rest of the unit routing off the field, it just came close to that little bit of difference who won out by a hair. 
and then are able to kind of chase down, clean up, and then help other units nearby and just kind of swung that entire side of the battlefield. So despite the fact that Baby Yoda lost his generals, his units on the other flank won so hard. Well, technically barely won, but once you barely win, you win super hard. You clean up and you still have units to swing the other direction. And just having Ren Shu left, having any of the general left, even if you have multiple generals left, they were not going to bring that back. So perhaps the only person who could have kind of swung things is if Ren Shao stayed alive, because then you could play him as someone who's away from combat with distant courage, and then all your units sort of fight in an unbreakable uh, sort of state so that they're able to kind of beat back the numerous enemies who no longer have that morale bonus, and maybe they'll come back from that. Uh, but overall, very interesting fight. I think those Warriors of Left did okay. Uh, I think raw stat after the charge, uh, they're vastly superior with their 50% evasion. So definitely a decent unit there, but that initial charge determined a lot of this, and the way the two units lined up also deter determined pretty much the result because that left side, with the way the center lines were uh, compared to each other, much more thinner on Wang Pain's side, and just even distribution on Baby Yoda's side kind of determined this match. Very fun display by both players. We're probably going to get a couple more of these. As I mentioned before, Group E is filled with people who know each other from the Discord, and we're likely to see more of these matchups in the future. So if you love these theme battles, especially mere matchups, uh, you're in for a treat for the rest of Group E. And until then, bye.